Hello, I'm Gordon Schimmel, a staff member at the Academy of Model Aeronautics Education Department. A primary objective of the Education Department's mission is to be a resource to attract newcomers, young and old, to the opportunities of model aviation. In response to many requests for information about activities that can be used at club events, schools, and for other community outreach, we created the AMA Flight School website as a clearinghouse for the question that we get asked most often, how do I? But first, just a bit of history. The meaning of the academy in our name goes back to 1936, where AMA clubs functioned as learning communities dedicated to the promotion of science, technology, engineering, and math, long before the STEM acronym came into vogue. We shouldn't forget that model aviation is a promotional and educational tool that can be used by AMA clubs in events for the general public to reach schools with classroom and after-school programs, as well as other community groups. We all know about the excitement of radio-controlled flight, but AMA's education department also uses simple, quick-build, inexpensive models to make it easy for club members to interest others in model aviation. Thanks to model aviation, everybody becomes an aviator. How does this happen? Simple free flight models have been used as a great way to engage newcomers in the fun of flight. These activities may help a visitor to a club event decide to join the club and share in the adventure of model aviation. And most important, these activities make everyone a pilot and everyone leaves with a model of their own. So let's get started with this installment of AMA Flight School's How Do I? Today, Tom will show us how to make quick modifications to two over-the-counter gliders club members frequently give away at public events. He will show us how to notch the fuselage to create a launch lug, even use a pair of scissors to speed up the process, how to score and crack the wing, how to set the dihedral, and how to safely launch it. Three, two, one, launch. I'm here with Tom Sanders, a longtime member of the AMA Education Committee, an avid free flight modeler who for over a decade has been the creator of several free flight competitions for the nationally known Science Olympiad program. He's going to show us how to modify two simple hand launch gliders that club members often give away during club events. Welcome to AMA's Flight School, Tom. Thanks, Gordon. We've got two gliders here that everybody's familiar with. And because we're the AMA and we like to see flight performance improve, what we're going to do is take a basically very simple toy airplane and actually turn it into more of a sport aircraft. Something that's uh, got a little more stability and may be flying a little bit longer. What we have here is the Eagle first. We have an unopened package. It's best to open this with a pair of scissors and do a quick inventory. What's important for us, our first step, is that we're going to change the fuselage from just being a hand launch style aircraft. We're going to put a notch in here and that's going to be used for the rubber band. The best way to do that, and I have found just taking a ruler and my fine ballpoint pen and draw a line below the weight mass like this. And then from that point I essentially, to the front of the leading edge of the wing, I can make a mark there. I can draw another line. That will be the area that's going to be removed for the notch. Now, to make the notch in a mass-produced scenario that you might be doing with a club, I like to take a double-edged razor blade. I safety it. I cover one edge. So the other side is just uncovered enough and make my notch started that way. Then I can take an X-Acto knife. I essentially have a scribe line. Now if you have a crowd of kids waiting, uh, everybody's in line and you need to rush things along a little bit more, I'd pick up a pair of scissors and just carefully cut where my notch is and pop it out remove that material and that produces a very effective notch. From here, 
we can slide the wing in. It's best to get the wing started, support the fuselage, pull it through to about its midpoint. If you have a standard style ruler, it's nice to go about two inches. Come in from the wing tip, draw a scribe line there. Same on the opposite tip, a scribe line. And remember, we're using a fine tip ballpoint pen. On that scribe line, we are actually going to fracture the wood to help us create that dihedral. So at a, at a fairly steep angle, you draw the pen through the wood. And just as when you use scissors to cut the notch for launching, using a ballpoint pen doesn't involve any sharp cutting tools. Correct. Now we need to crack this, and believe it or not, we're not going to break this. We're just going to crack in a dihedral joint. See how easy that was. And what I'm going to do, I get thirsty every once in a while. I'm going to steal the cap off my cup here, place that underneath. That's going to be my dihedral angle. As long as I do this for both sides, we'll be fine. An excellent glue for this operation is cyanoacrylate. Cyano just a bead down on that seam. If you want to wipe it, that's fine. I put my accelerator into a squeeze bottle, so I just can drip it here onto the site. That locks the glue joint. I should point out that that's better than a spray bottle, especially if you're working in a classroom. Absolutely. We do the same for the other side. Place our simple gauge. Run our bead of glue, a quick wipe, a drop of accelerator. We don't need a lot of this. A quick drop. That essentially locks in our dihedral. That's critical for our flight. Simply add the stabilizer, the fin, and uh, in many cases, if you're working with children, they, they really want to see a pilot with the aircraft. It's not necessary, it's just extra baggage. You know, the grain of this is running parallel, which it's going to be our rubber launcher. So what we want to do is we want to have a hardened surface in here. So right at that notch where the rubber band's going to go, we're going to add just a little bit of glue. And then we're going to accelerate it. So what this does, instead of having this bottom accidentally get clipped off because you've stretched the rubber band so far, it's cut into the grain. We're preventing that as an issue. Now one of the things we discuss in uh, everything we do for the public is how to demonstrate safely launching something uh, like this model uh, in an area where there may be other people around or uh, techniques to get the plane really flying well so that it thermals possibly. Sure. In this instance we're going to use a uh, simple stick, this is a 3 8 inch dow dowel with a notch cut in it, and 1 16th FAI rubber. We're using a, a, a loop of about, oh, let's say about 7 8 inches. Not too critical. What's nice is, is that this rubber meets right inside that new launch lug that we put into the glider. Now on safety, it's important that whenever this is launched, it's never launched on a level basis. It's always launched, angled into the air in some way. The other thing is that when you have a lot of kids together, you try and have, it, uh, have, have some separation between the kids. We don't want to have a lot of airplanes flying in the same areas necessarily. The great place is in a field. There are other areas too. We have a large hall, gymnasium. These can be flown inside a gymnasium. So we can do this as a school activity. We can do it as a Cub Scout activity. We could do it as an after school activity. Uh, we certainly can have AMA club members who are having a group session of some sort. They can fly these indoors or outdoors. The, the critical thing is you need to have at least the floor space of a full-size basketball court. Anything over that size, we're good to go and fly. Excellent. Gordon, we can do the same thing with the jet fire. It's nice. 
we've got a, a reference line already, aileron that's actually inked into this wing. We're going to use that as our reference line for the dihedral. Just draw right along there, a couple passes with the ballpoint pen. And that's how we crack it. Place this underneath, glue the seam, we're ready to rock and roll. Remember we put in this launch lug, that's so we can attach the rubber band. And we don't want to stretch it out too far. We don't, want to, we don't know how far the glider is going to fly. One thing we do know is that the trailing edge of the stabilizer is, is higher than the leading edge. This causes this glider a tendency to loop. So if this loops and we launch it, it could come right around and hit us in the back. We don't want to have that happen. So instead, we're going to use that looping. We're going to do it almost in a horizontal way it's going to make a nice sweeping turn. We don't angle it straight, we angle a little bit in the air. Pull back a little bit and we do three, two, one, launch. Three, two, one, launch. Thanks for joining us. You can find other great activities and projects on this Flight School website and if you have questions, don't hesitate to contact us at modelaircraft.org. I'm Gordon Schimmel for The Academy of Model Aeronautics. Learn, grow, fly with us.